Hi everybody and welcome to video number 15 in my EFT series. Um, this video will follow on from the last video I did for Valentine's Day which was about attracting love into your lives and this one will be about attracting the love as well as loving and healthy relationships. So uh, about love, what I will be trying to help you achieve with, with this video is to uh, have healthy, lovely, loving relationships that you want to attract into your life, but not just with other people, have that lovely relationship with yourself, because once you are able to attract lovely, sort of loving relationship with yourself and love yourself, then you will find that the relationships you want into your lives will be just coming your way. So I'm very passionate about helping people to help them overcome abuse and I have already done a video about abuse and I was getting some comments, uh, people who have been, you know, or have been just coming overcoming abuse have been asking me could I please do more videos on this topic and could I help them to overcome the attachment they still might have towards the abusive partner and uh, I said yeah I will do more videos but the most important thing is that you start to love yourself and cherish yourself because once you are able to love yourself then you will be able to be in loving relationship with other people and this is how it is when you are not able to look after your own energies, when you are not able to say no to others and that's when abuse can happen. So the, the, the kind of main aim of these videos is for you to get in touch with yourself, with your own feelings and um, you know I do volunteer for this charity, I'm an ambassador kind of raising awareness of what domestic abuse is, that it is not just, um, it is not just violence, it can also be emotional and this is actually what the society in the UK is recognizing now because now things like um, emotional abuse, uh, you know, being controlled by your partner, if your partner does it, doesn't let you go and see your friends or is controlling the way you dress or your finance, all that is now a criminal offence and it is a kind of good thing but when I kind of work with these charities uh, I point to the fact that for people to be abused there has to be a pattern, a pattern that would have started somewhere in childhood. And the people in the charity say to me, oh, no, no, that is not usually or that is not always the case. That could be the case, but not always. And they kind of tell me how there are so many, you know, people, women who have uh, been abused, but that abuse, you know, hasn't been in their family. That in their family, that was a kind of lovely, loving family that's done a lot for the community. The people have been, you know, gone through with education, university and everything else but the thing is often abuse does, doesn't necessarily need to be seen and when I go back to my old childhood when I was young I wanted to do really well at school that was very important to me but behind it all was that if I did well at school I would be loved that's how I was kind of earning the laugh. So if I wasn't doing well at school, suddenly I felt threatened because I thought, well, if I don't do well, I won't be laughed. And so I did I always, you know, through most of my school, apart from not always excelling at art, sometimes I had a, a little bit worse marks in art. But apart from that, I always had the best marks in everything. And when my own sons went to school and they did not quite had the, they, you know, they've done very well, but not in all subjects. And to me, it was a kind of relief 
uh, thinking, oh, well, I'm glad that's the case because I don't want them to be like me. And in those days when they were at school, I still haven't gone through all this um, kind of self-awareness and everything else. But already then instinctively, I was kind of knowing that, you know, sometimes achievement or, you know, overachievement can actually point to some kind of abuse. But um, going back to me talking to the charity about a pattern, these patterns we pick up as children and they are in our subconscious mind and no matter what we are trying to do, it's very easy to change that. So you will often see women or you know, people who have gone through abusive relationship and they have to take a lot of courage to leave those relationships only to find themselves again in another relationship where they will have exactly the same issues and I had uh, when I did my counseling course our tutor said to us if you are at a party and you get attracted to somebody just run 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 away you know don't get involved with that person and the reason why she said that was because um, what she was suggesting is that we get attracted to the negatives and then in that relationship we will just continue uh, in these negatives and uh, what I would say to you don't worry about running away but just be aware be aware if you went through a few relationships that didn't go the right way then uh, be aware and watch out for the pattern Watch out. and sometimes people say to me well how do I know at the beginning my partner looked so lovely and then things kind of fall to pieces but um, just watch the language if your partner says to you I need you I need you that person will be a needy person so they're, they're kind of pointers right away straight at the beginning uh, for you to know whether you know that person is the right person and of course we attract people into our lives to kind of be working on the issues in our own lives so you know if you know if uh, if we are abused if we continue to let ourselves get abused then we need to think about our self-worth do we really matter do we count you know are we worthy are we worthy to ourselves and if we are then that abuse will not happen if we are able to value ourselves and love ourselves then we won't need that abuse to happen and you know when I look at my own life and you know I went through a lot of kind of relationships that were abusive and um, you know I look at every relationship taught me a lesson even though in those days actually I wasn't thinking in those terms and I do remember one particular boyfriend who always got me to do everything you know who kind of was very abusive I had to do all the hard jobs for him and he would say oh our relationship is not working and I didn't want to see that I kind of felt so that I was in love and everything else and I was kind of scared of leaving that relationship because I only knew him it was many many years ago 26 years ago I was in London as an au pair and um, you know, I, I, I knew it wasn't quite right, but, you know, I thought, well, if I, if I leave him, then I will be kind of on my own. I didn't have any other friends there, apart from the family I used to be an au pair for, you know, I didn't know anybody else, you know, he was my life then. But, um, yeah, so let's step on that kind of thing. Let's step on, um, you know, on you trying to recognize that there is this abuse which is happening and you perhaps are not recognizing it. So if I go back to my past and think of the way I was abused and I let that happen and I let that tolerate, that was because I didn't have any kind of sense of self-worth. The setups for the tappings would be um, even though I let myself get abused 
I am in this abusive relationship. Um, I do everything my partner asks me to do. Uh, I'm not able to say no. Uh, and even though I know it's not quite right, I don't know how to leave this relationship. But I love and accept myself anyway. So even though I am tolerating abuse, I know it's not quite right, but I don't know how to say no to abuse. That's how it's always been. I've always done everything for everybody. Uh, I always lived how others wanted me to live. I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I let this abuse happen, even though others are taking advantage of me, I laugh and accept myself anyway. So this abuse, I find it hard to say no. People take advantage of me. This abuse, this abusive relationship, I do everything people ask me to do. I cannot say no. This abusive relationship I just do everything for everybody. People take advantage of me. This abuse that I tolerate. This abuse. I can't say no. So take a deep breath. And just see what comes up for you and then see if it comes up if you feel it anywhere in your body because then you know from my previous videos is that I tell you to tap wherever that feeling comes up describe it as best as you can and follow on with the tapping but going back to the uh, you know to my comments where I was asked well can I kind of make more videos about helping people to overcome the emotional attachment that they still feel to their partner so even though you are here and you've realized that okay that abuse has to stop and that is a very very brave thing to do you know well done for that because that is not an easy thing to do and you kind of step away from the abusive partner or friend or whatever you might still find that indeed you still feel a lot of love towards that person and you still feel this feeling of loss and the reason you, you kind of feel that is because that is how you've always known love to be you watched your parents you know follow the same kind of dynamics and it is it, it can be scary for you to suddenly be on your own because you would you know, like you are weighing it out being on my own or this love and you kind of feel well that love is perhaps preferable to feeling you know here on my own and this is how I felt when I was in London and I kind of knew that relationship was not quite right even though I didn't feel it as much as my boyfriend then did but to me it was like oh well you know if I leave him then I'll be completely on my own unloved and everything else so that is a thing we can also tap on so uh, even though I still got this emotional attachment uh, what would I be without my partner I will miss him I will miss my partner I still do miss my partner even though I knew it was an abusive relationship and I ended it 
I still miss my partner and that is okay. So even though I've still got this emotional attachment to my partner and my miss it, I miss his loving sides because of course you got attracted uh, to his loving side but it's actually the you know the uh, the nasty bits which uh, you know have been bringing all that fear into your relationship and everything else so um, even though I still got this emotional attachment to my partner and I miss him or I miss her I love and accept myself anyway so as we tap the reminder phrases we'll just tap on the emotional attachment so so this emotional attachment and I feel it as a tightness in my chest so wherever if you feel it anywhere or if you can see what it looks like any color just say say it now so this emotional attachment tightness in my chest this tightness in my chest this emotional attachment this tightness in my chest this emotional attachment it feels very tight and suffocating this suffocating feeling this suffocating feeling in my chest this suffocating feeling this tightness in my chest this suffocating feeling and I feel it as kind of blackness it's a kind of blackness over my chest and I'm sinking into the blackness and I feel suffocated so this tightness in my chest so take a deep breath and just see where that takes you now and as I'm doing this um, the stepping I'm just uh, making a reference to a session I'm doing currently which is called body talk and in my last session, the therapist um, was telling me that I have drowned in my past life. Sometimes in the 1600s in Rakshawas, there was a natural disaster, there was a flood. And um, this is an information she gets from my body. Now, as I said, I do believe in past lives, but I would not expect others to believe in that but no matter whether there are past lives whether we lived here whether we were here before we will always have these patterns which we'll be following and these patterns you know if it's not from past lives it will be the patterns of the generations generations of our families and so you know when i look at my family and you know i see i just was also listening to a astrology reading i had and um you know in the astrology reading it came up that when you know when I was pregnant uh, sorry no when my mom was pregnant with me she had a lot of fear and then I was then adopting that fear and of course it represented as illness because I've been ill quite a bit most of my childhood and my adult life but this is something kind of very important the realization yes it was my mother's fear I have adopted but now it's it all you know I have adopted it it is my fear and I myself have to take responsibility for that I can't blame my mother and everyone else it's so uh, you know the secret of love loving relationships attracting more love into your life is that you actually accept this responsibility for your own life and you kind of don't blame it on others and if you do blame things on others you know it really only ever has to do with you so actually when um, it's quite interesting for me I'm not psychic in any way but when I do trigger people and when people do accuse me of various things 
you know, I only know that this is only to do with that person, it's nothing to do with me. I try to explain it to these people that, you know, it's nothing to do with me, that it's only I have triggered a sensitive area in their body, you know, in themselves, and, you know, it is their own responsibility, and uh, there are people who will kind of be happy for me to tell them. People say, oh, at least you are honest, you know, and you are open. And this is something which has taught me to kind of, um, you know, enjoy happier relationships is by being open, open about things. Because, you know, it was in my family very much the habit to kind of bottle things up and not to be open about things. But life has taught me that, you know, to be, a to be able to be authentic to myself, to be loving to myself, I need to be open and I need to say right, this is my thing, I own it up and also in front of other people and you know like my family say well don't say this or don't my mum didn't like me talking about my dad that he suffered from depression but you know there's nothing wrong with that you know there's just an awful stigma you know to depression and everything but most of us will you know have hard times in our lives and you know, I believe that by being open, by talking about it, I will actually encourage others to talk about it and help them to discover their own truths because uh, the bottom line of it all is that, you know, a lot of my life I've lived in ignorance, you know, and I, I studied hard and I tried to do things, you know, I remember when I was looking for a job back in Prague. It took me a few months to find a job and suddenly I didn't like that I was suddenly here doing absolutely nothing and I felt like oh I should be working. I remember weekends. I did. I liked the weekends because everyone else was relaxing but the week I felt guilty. You know I had these guilty feelings like I'm not doing anything. You know I should be doing things. But uh, you know, uh, you know, I worked very hard and then I did a teacher training 14 or 15 years ago and I got very ill and I couldn't complete my dream and, you know, it was very hard for me to accept, oh, I can't do anything and my illness is so debilitating and I can't do things to stop me from not thinking of the illness. I can't do, I can't do things to cover up and that is when I started to go deeper in myself and I'm actually very grateful for that because I live my life authentically now and not in ignorance and you know I am you know I do take the responsibility for my life that is where I'm now and what I did before you know when I was kind of um, you know, working, trying not to think of things and everything else. It was a, bit, a little bit like addiction, you know. I didn't want to know that I'm not looking after my own space, you know. I didn't want to know and I did everything that everyone else wanted me to do. And, um, you know, it was like my mom would always say to me, oh, someone else did this for you, so you should now help them back. But nowadays, I don't feel I need to do that. I, when I laugh, when I give my love, I love unconditionally. I don't expect that people should anything, you know, I don't expect anything in return. And I also am able to say no to people, and I am now able to say no to people who are taking, trying to take advantage of me, and I'm much stronger in that, you know. I, um, I've just started check lessons, and uh, because the, the language school could not find a teacher close by, a teacher of Czech, they kind of find me on LinkedIn because I, uh, you know, it said there that I speak Czech. So, so yeah, I started to teach Czech, which is something I've always wanted to do. I wanted to teach languages. And um, there I was. It takes me a good hour to drive there. And I said to myself, well, let me see, uh, let me see, it takes me an hour to drive, I have two lessons there, it takes me another hour to drive back, and, you know, for, you know, it's like I spent four hours, and so I went back to the language school, and I said to them, look, I think you should contribute towards my petrol, and in the old days, I would kind of think, 
no, 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 I, I, I shouldn't ask, I shouldn't be entitled. But I did, and they, they did acknowledge that, and they did increase my fee. And so I was more in that place, you know, now, where I'm able to kind of protect my energies, my boundaries. And, you know, just before I finish, I will just remember one other thing. When I was much younger, I was learning to drive. And the teacher I had, the driving instructor, was not very nice. He was a kind of womanizer. He always had girls. He was like friendly with, and he would joke with them when he should have been teaching me. So they were all in the car. He was joking with them, and um, you know he would always tell me off. I do this wrong, and you know I should already have been in next gear. I should have put the brake on, you know, foot on the brake and everything else. And you know I felt like, oh my God, it's it's horrible. I wasn't looking forward to these lessons and. I said that to my parents and they said, well, you should, you should go and complain about him. And you know, then I was too scared. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't have the guts to complain today. That would be the first thing I would do. I would go complain about this instructor, say, look, you know, this is not acceptable behavior. He puts the students down, you know, he's got other women in the car who he's joking with. And, you know, that's just not right. I would go and do that straight away today, but then I was too scared. And what happened was that the driving instructor actually had an accident, he broke his leg. So, you know, I was so relieved. And then I had a lovely instructor, it was a lady, she also had a modern car, which I liked, but she would say to me, you know, I had two other guys, and you, and you're just natural drivers. You and these two other guys, you know, you're just natural at it. And she was right, I was very natural, but the guy made me feel like really rubbish. And I think in my last video, I was trying to demonstrate what happens when this laugh kind of gets mixed up, you know, and also in Czech. Yeah, that's right, this word in Czech is a very rude word. And if people kind of feel a sort of survival, kind of fear steps in, love goes and um, yeah so basically you know I today would be able to know I would be able to put it back to where are we back to love um, and yeah that is why I'm doing these EFT videos and just before we finish a good way to just I always like to round up on um, you know at the end even if if you are if even if you are not in a place where you would like to be you can tap even though I've done a lot of work on myself but there is still work to be done I love and accept myself anyway you know even though because there are so many issues there will be so many things you know people often say oh tapping doesn't work and the reason they feel it doesn't work is they give up because there is so many things, so many aspects which kind of we need to work through before finally the energy can flow through us and we can kind of attract more love into our lives. But let's just round this uh, video with stepping on the love and attracting more love into your life. So just step on love, on loving relationship. Peace, harmony, the sunshine, love, the beauty, beauty of life. In this nice nature, I can hear the birds singing, and it's just so beautiful. Just stop and get into your body see feel feel because we are doing so many things to stop us from feeling feel the love feel the love in your body which you then are able to give to others this love this love this love this loving energy loving and healing energy this love I wish you loads of love and look forward to seeing you during my next video. Bye for now.